Hey guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com. Today I'm answering a question from Grant Robinson who asks, what do you look for in a bike that you want to do a DIY electric bicycle conversion? Now I'm going to list the things that I look for when I'm trying to choose a good donor bike. The first thing I start with is the frame material. I prefer steel when possible because with steel you can get away more with bending it, it's stronger. Lots of times steel bikes are not overly optimized for weight savings, which means you aren't gonna have a lot of weak spots, which might be all right on standard pedal bikes, but which could be a problem on electric bikes that are heavier, going faster, braking harder, etc. Now that doesn't mean you can't use aluminum bikes, and I've used many. It's just that when it comes to things like drilling holes and frames and other modifications, you have to be a lot more careful. The other thing is that on an aluminum frame, you're almost certainly going to want to use torque arms to hold on a uh, hub motor in the dropouts because with softer aluminum dropouts, you might have an issue with the axles of the hub motors actually working their way out, especially if you're using regenerative braking, which is gonna put a force backwards on the axle as well as forwards. You're gonna wanna look at torque arms on an aluminum framed bike. If you're doing a front hub motor conversion, so you're gonna be putting them in the uh, fork on the front, if you've got a magnesium or an aluminum or another soft metal fork, you're absolutely gonna to wanna to use a torque arm there. The next thing I look for is the sizing of the frame in terms of the components that I need to mount. So when it comes to motors, if I'm doing a hub motor conversion, I'm gonna be looking for probably 135 millimeter spacing in the rear or a 100 millimeter spacing in the front. Those are very common and you're unlikely to find bikes with other spacings unless you go with specialty like downhill bikes or, or other bikes that don't use as standard parts. For mid drives on the other hand, I'm gonna be looking at the bottom bracket to make sure it's the right size, whether I'm looking at like a 68 millimeter bottom bracket or perhaps a larger one on a fat bike. Basically I'm going to be looking to make sure whatever motor I'm planning to use is going to be compatible with the size of my frame. The next thing to look at in terms of frame sizing is space for batteries. I generally like to put my batteries in the center triangle of the bike because I feel it's just more comfortable and that the bike handles better when the weight is between my knees. On some bikes that's easier to do than on others and it really depends how big that front triangle is and if you have anything else in the way there. So I like to use bikes that have larger triangles that have more space in the frame and that way I can stuff in a lot more battery. And if I'm going to be using a battery that's bolted onto the frame, I'm gonna make sure that the water bottle bosses, where a water bottle cage is bolted onto the bike, is located in a place that I can actually put my battery there. Sometimes the water bottle cages are mounted really high or really low, and they don't actually leave you room to put your battery in those bolts. So it's another thing to look at. Personally, I like to use triangle bags a lot. That just allows me to stick the biggest battery I can in that triangle. But if you're looking at bolting your battery on, it's important to note that you're gonna to wanna to look at the placement of those bolts. Uh, that's another reason I also like to go with steel bikes, by the way, is that you can get away with drilling into them more easily. Um, and so sometimes I will put bolted on batteries onto the down tube just by drilling an extra hole if the water bottle bosses aren't in the exact right location. The next thing that I believe Grant asked about were shocks. So do you want shocks on your e-bike? For me, I like to have at least front suspension, you know, going with a suspension fork. If you don't have any suspension, then the ride can be fairly rough unless you're staying on just perfectly smooth manicured bike lanes or street surfaces. So at a bare minimum, I really like to have a suspension fork. It also just reduces the hand and wrist fatigue from the handlebars vibrating so much. Now, if you're going with rear suspension, that can be a lot of fun for an e-bike. You know, it'll handle nicely, it'll have a really nice ride. If you're hitting potholes or hopping curbs, it'll just be a lot more comfortable. But having the rear suspension often takes up a lot more space in the bike and can make it hard to stick batteries in there. Lots of times that shock absorber for the rear will be exactly where you want to put a battery and it's really frustrating to figure out how to make it fit. I've done conversions like this where the battery just barely fit in there and lots of times you have to start doing modifications as well. So it's important to consider if you want rear suspension to choose a bike that has a lot of room left for batteries and not one where the suspension seems to take up the entire front triangle. The last thing to consider is simply the style of bike that you want. I personally really like converting mountain bikes, especially when I'm using them for street use, because mountain bikes are often overbuilt for their purposes, and that way when I'm using it as like a street commuter, I just have a stronger, more robust e-bike. A lot of people need a specific type of bike though. Maybe you need a folding bike because you have to be able to take it on the train, or maybe you want a fat bike because you want to be able to ride on the beach or in the snow. So the last thing is basically just choosing the right style of bike for you. And I actually had a whole video about that uh, a couple videos ago. So make sure you go check that one out. So that's all I have for you today. And I hope that video is helpful if you're planning on doing your own electric bicycle conversion in the future. 
Last but not least, it's time to announce the winner of the eBike School book giveaway. And the randomly chosen commenter for my last video is... Lazaro. So congratulations. Just let me know which one of my books you'd like and where to send it. And anybody else who wants to win a copy of one of my books, whether it's the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself e-bike guide, DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, or Electric Motorcycles 2019, just put a comment below and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. Thanks for watching everyone. See you next time.